listeners, we have a special bonus episode for you all today on a subject we don't normally get into, but But. we're going to talk about art history butts. Uh, Bums, Mm -hmm. gluteal clefts, if you will, like that, (laughs) whatever whatever the correct term, whatever your preferred term, your geographical term. The round protuberance behind you. Yeah, or from the concave Hank Hill-esque little empty sacks of flour back there to, yeah. to the perfectly spherical uh, Botero mm-hmm. booties. Yeah, Botero. Whatever whatever your preference, we're here to talk about it. Yep. yep. Including, listeners, the ones that you all submitted. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And we have our experts on the line, uh, of all things museum bum related. Mm-hmm. Jack Shoulder and Mark Small, who have been working in museum education to make art and museums more accessible, which is right up our alley. Yep. Their work includes the Museum Bum social media account, where every day you are greeted with a variety of bums. Love it. Yes. Love being greeted by bums of all sorts Ancient, from all centuries. Contemporary. Yes. You got painting. You got sculptural. You got printmaking. So much more. Yes. Sometimes all you got things. you got little little poots coming out of the bums. They keep it spicy. It's a, it, it's, it's a bum prize. I'm surprised. Exactly. <laughs> and now they are the authors of Museum Bums, the book. <clears throat> yeah. So this one. Yes. This one right here. This is the right book. Here. This yeah. book right there. You have to be careful where you point on this, this one. Is... <laughs> this book right here, listeners, we really enjoyed because it's so easy mm-hmm. to get into, but we especially loved how they talked about all kinds of different bodies on the gender spectrum. You realize by the end of the book that you can appreciate a a bum from any era, (laughs) despite the cleanliness of said era. You would think, okay, never mind. Oh my God, I didn't think about it. There are different hygiene things per per era. Lack of hygiene is one of them. Um. (laughs) I would argue in America today, there was probably a time in another country previous to our current century that had better bum hygiene. I'm going to say this. Bidets are not standard in the U.S., and that's yeah, a problem. They should be. Okay. It's gross. So, it's gross, y'all. It is. I don't Get like a to bidet. think about it. Yes. Take care of your bum. Yes. If you take nothing else from this conversation, take care of your bum. Take care of your bum for everybody. Right. Every bum D. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah, that's We're getting in there. Okay. okay. <laughs> so so we, we accidentally forgot to hit record at the beginning of our interview with them. And, and we meant to ask Jack and Mark to re-record their intros, which was basically like, it was basically just them explaining who they are. Uh, but we got caught up. It was a good conversation. It we was. got caught up in the conversation. It was. So we're going to drop you like two minutes into mm-hmm. the interview when I suddenly realized I needed to click the record <laughs> button. So ha- have a seat <laughs> and enjoy the episode. Buen provecho. Yes. <laughs> We really enjoyed the book. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. we did. Um, we found it to be very accessible, and we love that you all talked about like all kinds of different bodies, like on the gender spectrum. Like we love that. Bums are universal. Pretty much everyone has a bum, so we wanted to reflect the real breadth of bums that are out there and celebrate all different body types as well as um, yeah, different identities that have always existed. So we're really happy that. You vibed with that. It was it was a really good read. I feel yeah. like, especially, I I, well, I was very much an artist, but didn't really like the the art history so much mm-hmm. <laughs> side of it. But mm-hmm. I remember going to museums, and yeah, the the bums are like a really good entryway because they're kind of funny. Like yeah. they're 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 fun to take pictures with. Like everybody can <laughs> joke around about it. It's not so serious. It's not like super sexual or anything like that. It's just like everybody's got a bum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. We get messages from parents who are saying, yeah, we wanted to take our kids to the museums, but we were worried they were going to be bored. So <laughs> as soon said, as we pointed out the bums, they're like, oh, yeah, we need to go out and find as many as possible. <laughs> and then they were really upset when they had to be dragged away from the museum. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> accomplished this. This is good. <laughs> so, yeah, bums are the entryway drug to, you know, museums. It's, it's how, we, <laughs> how we intro people to it. Um, my background's very much in museum education, so it's mm-hmm. always looking for hooks and ways to get young people interested in art and actually really kind of engage with them and think this is really interesting so (laughs) even if they weren't amazing artists or you know thought they weren't really interested it's like how can we make this fun how can we make this accessible and you know what bums great way to do this because Mm -hmm. it's humorous it's silly and actually it tells us 
so much about art and what the artist was trying to do and how we are supposed to look at these things. So, for example, if we're looking at a, a statue, usually there's loads of detail on the front, on the face, because these are, you know, it's human nature to be drawn to faces. But if we walk around the statue and have a look at the back, it's like, is there that same level of detail there? Is the is the back, you know, full of muscle and, and carving? Or is it just mm-hmm. draped over with something? Can we see a bum? Are we allowed <laughs> to see a bum? Like, what's what's going on with the, with the characters and the stories and everything that we're doing? So it is inviting art appreciation, but also bigger conversations around, like, consent and things like that. Mm-hmm. So what I love about bums and about this topic and about the book that we wrote is, like, it seems like a really silly topic, but mm-hmm. it gives you a really great jumping off point to have much bigger, deeper, more meaningful conversations about mm-hmm. things. And yeah, no, that's a really great point. I mean, I think like that that's one of the best uh, aspects of art is you can talk about these deeper subject matters through a very accessible visual language. It, you know, you can have multiple questions from particular images. They can take you down a, a variety of rabbit holes. You can project onto them a little bit and you can also uh, also do the more like <laughs> this is actually what the, the artist might have intended or the historical time might have intended. It's really great to have all those different perspectives when looking at things. And it is a really great entryway <laughs> it's the opposite of my experience like as a as a kid going to museum because mm-hmm. the fir- i remember my very first trip to museum the teacher was like listen there's nudity but we're not going <laughs> to talk about it no, giggling, <laughs> no whispering and that's that's exactly what we did we giggled yeah. and yeah. We whispered as we pointed to the to the statues um, yeah because you know. there's <laughs> boobs and willies and bums everywhere, <laughs> yeah. and that's funny and we're not going <laughs> to talk about them right and <laughs> um, i I have um, come across that when I've been working with with, uh, with young people with schools with teachers, and I found the best way to kind of tackle it is just like acknowledge, like, yep, that's that's a naked statue, because then that kind of takes that um, that kind of naughtiness away from it if we just mm-hmm. acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. And there's some really interesting discussions again to be had around it. So um, I talk about Michelangelo's David quite a lot in in my work, mm-hmm. and um, I often get asked, like, so why is he naked? What's going on there? Mm-hmm. And like I get to introduce ideas of like heroic nudity. Mm-hmm. So David is is nude. He's not wearing any armor because he's got God fighting with him, fighting for him. So he doesn't need that extra protection. Or sometimes you know nudity is um, a symbol of innocence or purity. Like when we see Adam and Eve before they've had the apple, they don't have a concept of shame. So of course they're just naked. Because why not? That's that's how we came into the world. Why not celebrate that? <laughs> Those are great examples. And we're actually really curious to know, like, where exactly did the idea for Museum Bums, like the book and the the social media accounts begin exactly? Before Museum Bums was a thing, we were both kind of using our socials to, because we're avid museum people, we, <laughs> we go around museums and take pictures of things and share them with our friends. And we were both kind of taking pictures of bums on statues going, this is nice, this is funny, this is weird, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of found each other and went, oh, we're both doing the same thing. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I realized we, we have this in common. And um, yeah, Mark set up the the Instagram way back when. And then once we'd got a bit of a bit of traction on there, we set up the Twitter together. And it's been a bummer day ever since yeah. with <laughs> the occasional break for holidays because like mm-hmm. sometimes we just need to get away. But yeah, a bummer yeah. day. Got to take a break from bums at, at, at some point in time. Yeah. <laughs> so normally the normally the format for our social media content is like a silly caption or a joke, quite often misconstruing what's happening in the picture just because it's fun. Yeah. Um, and then including the the actual information, the title, the artists, where it is, what date it was. And that approach of kind of misconstruing what's going on invites people to think, hang on, what what is going on in, in this image, in this picture? So it's a way to, you know, get a laugh first thing in the morning because we all need cheering up before we've had the mm-hmm. coffee. Yes. And then like having, you know, sometimes like percolate and think about things. Mm-hmm. And what's been incredible is the response that we've got from people all over the world from this. Um, so it started off with pictures that we'd taken ourselves, we've gone into museums, we've taken pictures of all of the bums we could find and particularly during lockdown people were like oh this is really this is really great this is this is giving us some some happy feelings when it felt like the world was ending and um we couldn't go out and take pictures of bums anymore because we were trapped in a flat um Mm -hmm. apartment um to to translate (laughs) and so 
People were not really, a really keen to, to share the bombs that they'd seen, they'd taken pictures of. So we were able to keep going. And it was real, like, it felt like community. And we were all kind of gathered around to appreciate bums and, and art, but mostly bums. Was there a lot of back and forth with your with your viewers? Like, were they sending bums in as well? Was it kind of a trade off of bums or was yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There were so many people who, uh, you know, at one point when everything was closed, when museums and everything were closed, People were sending their art that they had up on the walls or <laughs> like statuettes or candles or art that they'd done themselves. We have a rule that it has to be on display in a museum or has been in a museum somewhere. So we couldn't put up all of the fan <laughs> art of things. Sure. Mm. But it was really great to see that people were really engaging with it on that level. And um, I think it kind of helped that Bombs were having a bit of an interior decor moment <laughs> as well, because there's been so many butt-shaped candles and whatnot. Oh, and yeah. I'm still trying to figure out the whys and wherefores of that, but <laughs> I'm very glad that it happened. And it also means that Museum Bombs HQ has quite a lot of bombs on display in it. Yeah, just kind of by osmosis. We've got candles, we've got vases, we've got statuettes we've got various <laughs> and pieces around our house you'll have to you'll have to send us a photograph of them so we can see them yeah <laughs> love to see that <laughs> yeah we're in the middle of doing up museum bum hq at the moment so when mm-hmm. it's all photograph ready we'll be doing a grand tour of all the bums on display <laughs> Ooh, definitely let us know we will definitely share that with our listeners yes. amazing yes Thanks. please <laughs> yeah. So I imagine you're going to a museum, you're going through like basically all the all the bums in the museum is what it was what I'm I'm picturing. Is there one that has like more bums than others? Is there like a ah, before before the pandemic, we started something called the Big Museum Bum Count, um, where we would go to the museums that we visited and we would literally count all the bums that are on display. The caveat being that they had to be publicly accessible and not behind a paywall. Okay. And yeah, we had a few rules about what could be included and what couldn't because okay. if we didn't have any rules and you went to the natural history collection and you started counting all of the beetles and all of the ants and all of the butterflies then it gets a bit silly and it, yeah you gotta have some parameters here <laughs> <laughs> so the rules were it has to be humanoid okay or at least humanish yes so that means we can count minotaurs and mermaids and things like that satyrs gods yeah. things that aren't necessarily <laughs> human but have human human shape <laughs> yeah, yeah. Human, humanoid's a good term. Yeah, and like we we didn't count cherubs because um, we thought that was just you know we'll, we'll stick to grown ups. We'll stick to you know okay have an age adults. limit. Yeah, and yeah, we we went around. Um, so we went to all of the the big hitters over here in the UK. Went to the British Museum. Went to the V and A. Um, went to went to Tate. Um, mm. And it turns out the museum with the most bombs on display is a tiny little museum in Cambridge the Museum of Classical Archaeology. It's full of plaster casts of uh, pieces of art from, from all <laughs> over the world. So it's very much like this is a place where we where we study things. Okay, uh, okay. Some some of the plaster casts are like 150 years old in themselves. They're museum okay. objects. They're like the history of plaster casts in museums is fascinating anyway, because it's people bringing back art from the Grand Tour or from mm-hmm. trips around Europe or America to make it publicly accessible for people in Cambridge or people in London or whatever. Yeah. Because nowadays, international travel, much easier. Back Mm -hmm. in the 17, 18, early 1900s, if you want to go anywhere that's not on your doorstep, it's months. Not accessible to you. Grueling. Very, very very expensive. So the Museum of Classical Archaeology, being a university museum, is a place to study. And so they had all of the kind of greatest hits of Mm -hmm. classical art on the wall in a tiny, 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 tiny space. And... I counted and they came out with more bums than the British Museum, than the BA, than all of this. The curators wow. were over the moon to discover <laughs> this. We made local headlines by admitting that Museum of Classical Arche- Archaeology has more bums than the British Museum. And it caused nice. <laughs> it caused a little bit of a yeah, media furore. They absolutely loved the fact that like, yeah, we're we're the we have the most bums on display in the UK. Gotta display it on a sign next to the museum. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they use a plaque. <laughs> pretty sure they use it in all their marketing now. And yeah, we did a did a couple of events with them to kind of celebrate bums, bums in art. Um so we did that. that was a valentine's day special that was yeah. february 2020 one of our last public out well, it wasn't our last public <laughs> outing february 2020 oh, yeah. before everything shut down was a valentine's day event at museum of classical archaeology we were talking about uh, uh greek greek love greek love <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's a good way to go out, I guess, if you're going to go into a uh, a long time away from other humans. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but we've had uh, our, our event calendar for 2024 is filling up. We're very excited to be doing stuff around the UK in different museums. The National Museums Liverpool are having an exhibition and the focal point of it is the Rokeby Venus. Okay. Um, okay. So this was done by Spanish artist Velasquez in mm-hmm. And it's a really rare example of a of a nude um, by a Spanish artist mm-hmm. from that time. And it shows a reclining Venus with a Cupid holding up a mirror. Her face yeah. is all blurry. A lot of the painting is very blurry, but the focus really comes in around the bum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Front and center. Nicely in focus. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a good one for us. <laughs> it's yeah. a good one yeah. for us. And this has been one of my favorite pieces for so long because it's not just the the lushness and the beauty of it and all the textures from the um from all the fabrics as well as the lovely bum but Mm -hmm. it tells a much wider kind of historical narrative as well Mm -hmm. so in the early 1900s during the uh campaign for for women to get the vote here in the uk this painting was vandalized by a suffragette by mary richardson who became known as slasher mary who took a knife to (laughs) him carved it up and she did this to protest the arrest of Emmeline Pankhurst, who was a real leading figure in the uh, suffrage movement here in the UK. And she said, oh, the, the authorities have uh, have arrested and vandalised the most significant woman here in the UK. So I've vandalised the most beautiful woman in antiquity. All words oh, to that effect. Okay. So she used it as a real kind of protest moment to draw attention to what was going on and really kind of advocating for change. This still kind of continues to stay. Um, Mm -hmm. In late 2023, some campaigners uh, for the Just Stop Oil campaign smashed the the glazing, the glass covering with with a hammer to draw attention to the fact that the National Gallery in London and lots of other cultural spaces um, take money from oil companies. Mm -hmm. And with the climate crisis happening, like it's not okay to kind of culture wash really bad money yeah 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 so yeah the, this painting has been on display in the national gallery for about a century probably a bit more than that just over mm-hmm. a century a century and change which is in central london it's a you know huge tourist destination mm-hmm. and so mary richardson going in and it wasn't glazed at that point so she was able to oh actually damage the canvas there's photos of of um the damaged canvas and she went for it <laughs> <laughs> It was like mm-hmm. slashed several times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think that the newspaper said that she took a meat cleaver in. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So... I got the nickname Slasher Mary from that. <laughs> and this was a period, like, now in, in mid-21st century. Is that where we are now? Quarter of the way through. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> civil unrest and protests like that are not common, but they're not unsurprising. Mm-hmm. Then to have something like that happen in the National Gallery was, you know, it made headlines across mm-hmm. the UK, across the world, mm-hmm. and really kind of helped highlight the cause of the suffragette movement. And also, fortunately, the National Gallery were able to conserve the painting and put it back together, which is not as important as people having the right to vote, but it is important. <laughs> yeah. The good thing about museums is it's full of experts who have the the skills to do this. Uh-huh. And um, so now it's going on tour. It's going to Liverpool uh, where they're exploring bodies and gender. So we're going to be doing a big weekender full of activities around bums um, and exploring <laughs> all sorts of things with them. So we're, we're really lucky that we get to to travel, travel the UK and talk about bums. And if anyone wants to fly us to America, we're very happy to do tours there as well. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Well, we'll uh, we we don't have any money, but we will <laughs> we'll try to pull some strings for you. No, that would be great. No, um, we covered this painting like briefly in our Goya episode because yeah, it was it a- also has like a salacious history there. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, this one was part of Manuel Godoy's like erotic cabinet, like secret yeah. mm-hmm. uh, cabinet full of nudes. So this was one of his prized possessions. But yeah, we did. We covered um, Goya's nudes that were a part of that as well. So this was super scandalous. I think when he was being interrogated by the Spanish Inquisition, Mm -hmm. um, he was like, well, part of the argument, uh, you know, for him was he was looking at the masters like Velasquez. Yeah. It's like, well, he did it and y'all love this. So what, (laughs) what's the big deal? (laughs) Yeah, but it, I mean, it just goes back to like speaking about like how art can take on all these different meanings through through time, which is really, I think, fascinating too. Definitely, yeah. And I think it was the 
Michelangelo's David sculpture that fairly recently in America was a, a oh, yeah. te- school textbook was banned because it showed oh. a nude in it. The woke mob. Yeah, yeah that was in Florida. This guy, yeah, Florida. He was, be specific. It yeah, was Florida. the statue was designed to be out in a public square. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's not bad. It's right. art, and it's right. also what everyone has what everyone yeah. yeah yeah as predicted by the simpsons way back when is it a masterpiece or just some guy with his pants down <laughs> what yeah they predicted know? pretty much everything at this point <laughs> yeah a lot of it um here in the u.s <laughs> unfortunately um i mean it's easy to to see the where the where that leads to with uh kind of our insane politics here <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah there's a uh, um you know, there were there were banned books in the UK in school mm-hmm. libraries and in public libraries as well. And there's you know, there's fascinating collections now of those banned books that you can specifically just get those books, and it's great because you get to see what we're not not supposed to be reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice here at least. Like it it's made, and I don't know how much kids will actually take advantage of this, but it's made um, for states like Florida and Texas, where there there are these bands libraries, like at the Brooklyn Museum, like the, or the Brooklyn Library. They've been able to offer like free online education, free yeah. banned books to yeah. students, things like that. We'll see if like those students actually take part in it like mm-hmm. it, it's pretty scary times here but yeah <laughs> yeah as, as foreseen by the simpsons we got to deal with the uh, <laughs> crowds of uh, very angry very misguided people <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But still, nice bum. It's got a nice bum. He David does. has a nice bum. <laughs> yeah, a big bum. It's got a big Colossal. bum to balance his very giant head on top of his. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty um, intimidating if you see it in person. Yeah, because you, you can walk around it, and it's mm-hmm. I mean bigger than my head. So <laughs> yeah, it's a big bum. It's the size of it always just baffles me. So there's a mm. there's a cast of it in the DNA where I do a lot of work. Mm. The head is huge, but also it's the gnarly toes on that statue. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yeah, that guy has not nice feet. <laughs> <laughs> so I direct our gaze upwards to to something else. <laughs> Get to see a better a spherical butt, not so much the gnarly toes. But yeah. that makes sense. I mean, if you're walking around naked, you're gonna have probably not the greatest feet. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jack does. Uh, Jack volunteers as a tour as, as a tour guide at the V and A, and um, okay. it's not specifically about museum bums, but he's uh, part of a group of LGBTQ people mm-hmm. doing tours monthly yes um so the the vna has um has a program of lgbtqia plus tours that are run at the last saturday of every month and myself and some other volunteer tour guides share lots of lgbtqia plus histories connected to the objects on display and david is one of them um Mm -hmm. so through michelangelo who um you know experienced same-sex desire was in love with with uh, with other men and through to david himself arguably. So for those not familiar, David, big hero in the Bible, um, defeated the giant Goliath, had a favorite, had a companion, which is a word we hear a lot, named Jonathan. And the All right. connection between them that. was really, really intense. There was a very, very strong emotional bond between the two, mm-hmm. um, as well as a physical one. They would share, uh, they would share embraces, their shared mm-hmm. beds, their shared kisses and cuddles. Um, wow. As well as like a really strong like emotional connection, but the relationship is often just written off as they were just mates, they were just pals, mm-hmm. they were just companions. But it's like just good friends. Mm, pretty I, close. I know <laughs> I don't <laughs> have that same physical connection with my friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is actually written in the Bible. Like obviously the Bible has been translated and mistranslated mm-hmm. so many yeah. times over, but if we can get this level of they were more than just pals. From, from what we've got in the Bible now, mm. they were definitely <laughs> very good friends. Very good friends. Just make very good sense. friends. <laughs> it's been a while. That's interesting. Wow. We'll have to look into it more. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, so it's really interesting how, I think we already mentioned this before, how I guess bums throughout art history have changed meaning depending on who's looking at it and mm-hmm. what we know. Later, and that actually brings me to Henry Scott Took, I think yeah. is how you pronounce it. You mentioned him in the book, and it's really interesting to see how, how people have interpreted his nudes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. back at, during that time, but now knowing what we know about him, which is, I mean, super fascinating. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on yeah. his work. Yeah, so Took was a 19th century artist. He originally lived in London, and then he moved to Falmouth, which is a very seaside area in in Cornwall in the UK. Mm-hmm. In the summer, it's lovely. Any other time of year, it's... No, don't want to spend too much time. Is it cold? Is it... I'm, I'm not, my yeah, um, so... <laughs> the, the UK in summer, 
lovely. Mm-hmm. Other times of year, cold, wet, rainy, stormy, windy. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> Imagining gray, a lot of fog rolling yeah, in. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> and Cornwall is one of these places in the summer. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. And we can see that in, in Tuke's work with the glorious light that is just embracing mm-hmm. these figures mm-hmm. and just bouncing off the water. And it's just, oh, they're, they're beautiful, beautiful images. So Duke was contemporaries with Oscar Wilde and, Mm. um, you know, he was part of this urban society, you know, society with a capital S, the the echelons. And these people in cities lived in British industrial 19th century, smoggy, dirty... Soot everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Not pleasant. Layer of of smog on everything. And he was creating these artworks. He was going down to Falmouth and uh, other parts of Cornwall creating these artworks that were bright and clean and mm-hmm. there's i think Almost the same shimmery. book like yeah. if you're if you're naked in the city you're probably doing something sinful if you're <laughs> naked at the beach you're beautiful and pure and as god intended you mm-hmm. and so that's that's how people saw those artworks at the time it was it was a depiction of beauty and health really health, mm-hmm. naivety oh, yeah. in comparison to these horrible, dirty, smoky places. Um, <laughs> and as you say, now we see them differently. Now they yeah. they can be seen as erotic. They can be seen as sexy. But the world that we live in now has Calvin Klein adverts and yeah. mm-hmm. Netflix series with sex scenes in. Tuke's 19th century the UK didn't have those kind of things. They had, mm-hmm. you know, they, they were seeing this strength as purity rather than sexiness. When Tuke died, his family members decided to destroy some of his diaries and some of his letters. Uh, so there is a possibility that he was, you know, writing down that his queer feelings about mm-hmm. uh, about men, about these models that he was painting at the beach, but we don't know because they got destroyed. That mm-hmm. whole history, that whole possibility of queerness mm-hmm. is obviously part of queer history. Mm-hmm. And we see this time and time again with uh, with queer figures from history with, you know, mm-hmm. upon their death, letters, diaries being destroyed or censored because the families just wanted to cover things up. Yeah. But it's really interesting what you say about um, the meaning of bums changing over time and how we see them changing over time. One of the artworks that we come back to time and time again is, it's another Venus. It's a Aphrodite Calipigia, yeah. which is Aphrodite of the beautiful bums. Um <laughs> I think she might be our patron goddess. <laughs> um, some of the statues known as Aphrodite Calpage, she's exposing her bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, because she's the goddess of love, the goddess of, you know, sexual desire, there's a real, a real urge to kind of see this as like, oh, is this, is this being a bit sexy? Is she being a bit provocative? But again, it's thinking about the context of the time and like exposing your bum was kind of apotropaic, um, which means like, <laughs> a form of protection to ward off like evildoers, evil things, bad stuff. And we see it a couple of times in in Greek mythology. Um, So when Demeter is out looking for Persephone, she's very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Um, So an old lady comforts her by lifting up her skirt and showing off her (gasps) bum. And Demeter just (laughs) howls with laughter. It's like, what? And we kind of see this with uh, quite a few Venus Calipigia as well. There's one on display in... I want to say the archaeological museum in it's either Naples or Athens. She's looking back and she's kind of hoiking up her skirt, showing off her bum. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a bit of a smile on her face. It, it could be she's just being a bit cheeky. There's definitely uh-huh. something a bit fun about this. And it's not necessarily in a, in a sexy way. It's just it looks like she's playing a bit of a joke on people. Yes. Yeah, it's like, is this is this a silly joke? Is this apotropaic? Is she warding off the like the demons of depression by showing us her bum? It's it's all really just thinking about the context we can see it in so many different ways. There's also mm-hmm. a really lovely little story about a pair of sisters in Italy somewhere. Um so this is back in back in ancient Italy, and um they're supposed to be very, very beautiful and a pair of brothers fell in love with them. They're like, oh, who's going to marry which one? And they decided who's going to marry who based on who had the most beautiful bums. And they erected a little temple <laughs> to Venus Calipigian. Oh my gosh. So yeah, my background is in is in classics in the ancient world. So I mm. love finding stories like that because it's like, <laughs> yeah, this is what I vibe with. 
Yeah. <laughs> the temple to the bum, the, the most beautiful bums. I like that. No, One this day. is this is a very this is a very cheery bum, I would say. Yes. Yeah. So we sure. dedicate an entire chapter to Venus in our book because <laughs> there is so much to say about her. Mm -hmm. One of the images that we use, I'm gonna hold it up now, but um this is this is Venus Calipigia. Oh. Yeah. And yes. This is a photo photo taken in nineteen fifty-two by David Seymour. And it has this group of women this group of women in the nineteen fifties viewing Venus hiking up her skirts, hiking up her, her robes. Some of them, you can see there's kind of some things just clicked on in their brain. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. the female form, that's nice. Some of them are going, this is disgusting, this shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> and I just love that this photo taken more than 50 years ago, 70 mm -hmm. years ago, oh, oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> um, can encapture so much, so much emotion about a piece of stone about something that someone made thousands of years ago and um, it's all because they're looking at a bum yeah and with this one because it's it's women looking at aphrodite looking at venus mm -hmm. like we're seeing that like this can be enjoyed by by the female gaze yeah you might see a, a naked female form and think oh this was this was designed for you know heterosexual men to enjoy but mm -hmm. it's like no this is a goddess everyone can enjoy this goddess and yeah, yeah. provoking a response in all sorts of people, which is fantastic to see. Absolutely. Yeah, I could see this being the female gaze as well as having like a male gaze. <laughs> like it, it doesn't feel as male gazey as so many of the images we, we see mm -hmm. today where it's no. hypersexualized. It's a very different viewpoint. It's neutral, if yeah. I can say yeah, that. Yeah, it's kind of neutral. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's inviting of everybody's yeah. gaze. And it's funny because actually we had two listeners submit Venus as what they wanted us to discuss on yeah. this episode. <laughs> so one of them was the Aphrodite Calipigia. The other one was the lower back bum tease of Venus. And I think they were referencing Venus de Milo. The original just, Venus. The original. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's oh. just barely there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or I guess not the original, the most famous. But Probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah maybe, yeah, maybe the most famous. Yeah. We As were... seen in Disney's Hercules. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the uh, Venus gummy de Milo from The Simpsons. Put, exactly. Take it back yeah, to The yeah, Simpsons. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there is a Venus where someone fell in love with the statue, tried to... Oh. Um, What's the word? Make love? <laughs> the statue. Yeah. And then in the morning, they kind of had that post-nut clarity. It's like, no, this was a really bad thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we don't need to go into that. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And I had a little too much wine, a little too much yeah. meat, whatever they were drinking back then. <laughs> it's too fermented. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that your listeners have, have recommended more than one Venus to talk about because, mm -hmm. you know, she is... Well, actually, we say, we say in the chapter that there was a point where... Every every figurine, every fertility symbol in pre-classical, in prehistoric archaeology, they've decided that that this figure is a Venus, and there's no written record, so there's no one saying this is actually not Venus; it's someone else. It's just you know straight white archaeolo archaeological men going, well, there's a fertility symbol. She's got big boobs and big hips. We'll say that she's Venus. We'll we'll limit her to to that one goddess rather than. Yeah any number of spectrum of goddesses yeah yeah <laughs> yeah nice. exactly and like it could have been any number of like mother goddesses because it was all about you know mm. fertility and and all of that mm. um the yeah, end they, they were just like no venus and it's like mm. <laughs> interesting straight white men are mm. the worst <laughs> sorry sorry straight white i feel, I feel, I feel yes. a little uh excluded here so <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm joking i know we're, we're pretty bad it's all good. We're gonna say it's all good. Yeah. No, it's, 20, it's 2024. We're all learning. We're doing better through bums. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. So to contrast, Aphrodite, Aphrodite. the heavenly well, yeah, bums, yeah, the heavenly we're gonna, bums. We're, yeah, we're going the other way. Go the so. hellish bums. <laughs> the hellish bums. Yeah. Yes. So we had a couple listeners. So these two actually go together. So the temptation of Saint Anthony, the mm -hmm. triptych from 1501. Yeah. The damned cast into hell, the fresco by Luca Signorelli. So hell scenes, basically. We don't. We didn't know which one to pick exactly from the Temptation of Saint Anthony. There's mm -hmm. butts galore, a lot yeah. of a lot of mayhem, a lot of a lot of butt related stuff going on in in Bosch. Obviously, Horrors, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> very very interested in that. that Bosch sort loved of, uh, his butts. Yeah, yeah. He really didn't. He loved doing. <laughs> he loved his butts, and he loved doing weird things with butts. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. We we explore the the Garden of Earthly Delights, and mm -hmm. every time we look at it, it's like, did did you see that detail before? Like. Yeah. <laughs> 
is utterly bonkers. Just like they're 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 appearing. They weren't there before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of you see something yeah, new every time. time. It does feel like all of the all of the Bosch just kind of have a life to them, and things are just mm-hmm. kind of going on in that painting. And it's just like, yeah, I could believe that this is like cursed or possessed in some way, mm-hmm. but it would just keep on changing. What is fascinating is just like the the combination of things that are going on and all of mm-hmm. that i mean we've been looking at the at the st anthony one and honestly it just looks like someone's had one too many shrooms <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't even know where to begin yeah. mark well yeah so st. Anthony, <laughs> he was st anthony of egypt and not um, to be confused with the other st anthony patron saint of lost things this is Different than Anthony. Different than Anthony. <laughs> and he is credited with... Well, check your butt, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, credited with being the first monk, the first Christian monk. So he took himself off into the wilderness. He deprived himself from earthly delights. Uh, mm-hmm. He only ate bread and water and salt and took himself out of his community to, to think about Christianity more mm-hmm. and harder and better. And apparently just tripped balls the whole time. So a lot of the stuff that we were reading about what happened to him when he was kind of starving himself and Mm -hmm. taking himself, putting himself in a very fragile mental state definitely feels like he kind of started having delusions, started seeing things. You know, if you're only having bread and water, you're not getting in protein. So you're going to start being a bit grumpy (laughs) a bit. And then the temptations were things like, you know, being tempted by boredom or by, you know, um, physical touch. And it's like, mm-hmm. yes, of course, if you're, <laughs> if you're in the wilderness with nothing around, you're, you're going to be tempted to want to feel something. Like, even feeling boredom is, is feeling something. Yeah. And, yeah. like, so many studies have shown, like, yeah, physical contact is really, really important for, for mental health, for physical health. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like all of these things psychologically accurate for you know things to be tempted by or you know to, to be craving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Bosch is the artist of madness. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yes. one of the things that Saint Anthony experienced was being tempted by the devil, and this yes. included different phantasms, different different creatures, centaurs and satyrs, and different chimera. And Bosch definitely took this and ran with it. Mm, there are yeah. so many. There's something that's got the head of a fish and the legs of a human. There's random things flying in the air. There's weird people, naked people being used as to hold up a table. Yeah. There's so <laughs> many strange things going on. Mm. And obviously, if people are um, familiar with the Garden of Earthly Delights, which is another Hieronymus Bosch triptych, it just gets worse there. There's, <laughs> there's so much more. So, and it's just crammed in. Every last square inch of these huge paintings are covered in absurd, covered in absurd views. <laughs> yeah, the, the other one, the, uh, the damned cast into hell, this looks like a riot, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, it, there's definitely, there's, there's lots of violence, lots of suffering. And again, what's really interesting is that the... I'm going to say that the humans, because we've got humans, we've got demons, we've got angels here. Like, the humans are, are stripped bare, they're, they're nude. And it's like, mm. is this a nudity of, of innocence? Is it a, a nudity of sensuality? Like, what is, mm-hmm. why, why are they being cast into hell? What is, what is their sin that's, that's caused them to do this? Even the, the demonic bones are still very human in their nature, and they're just oddly coloured. Yeah, um, yes. Yeah, the yeah I love the green bomb the... sticking out in the front. Yeah. 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 The greedy yeah. It's yeah. even funny. shade of grey. <laughs> mm. In the book, we've got a chapter called Heavenly Bums and Hella Good, uh, Hella Good Bums and Heavenly Bottoms. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is about <laughs> art in art in religious spaces, art in churches mainly, because mainly we're mm-hmm. focusing on kind of Western, mm-hmm. uh, Western art in this chapter. Yeah. And so, especially in Europe, especially in churches that are more than two, three hundred years old, the level of literacy and what people are allowed to read mm. about religious texts. You, you would have illiterate people, um, illiterate peasants and farm workers and people in your congregation. So if you've got paintings, if you've got pictures, wall paintings, stained glass, those are going to tell the stories for you. You, you want those stories to have as much impact as possible. Mm-hmm. So you make them terrifying. Yep. <laughs> you, you show people what happens if you don't listen and pay attention and do what the vicar says or do what your parents say. Or if you're feeling slightly sin- sinful, 
you know, if you've got this picture in the back of your mind of <laughs> getting tossed down into hell by your hair by a demon, you're probably going to have second thoughts about it. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really interesting how that kind of changes as we move into the uh, 19th, 20th century when artists like Duncan Grant are being commissioned to do paintings in churches. Mm -hmm. um, so Duncan Grant was part of the Bloomsbury set, so he was mates with Virginia Woolf from Vanessa Bell. Google them, they're really interesting. The Bloomsbury set, quote unquote, lived in squares and loved in polygons. Uh I will look up the quote. It's fun. They're, they're fantastic. Anyway, so Duncan Grant was an artist who was commissioned to decorate. Mark's got the quote. Lived in squares, moved in circles, loved in triangles. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Almost like a PlayStation controller there. We just <laughs> um, so he decorated a church in Sussex, a little country church that was next to Charleston, which was the farmhouse he lived in. And in that one, he was accused of making the Christ figure just a little bit too good looking. He was he was distracting the, the priests and the congregation when they should have been focusing on other matters. But he also decorated another church. Yes, Lincoln Cathedral has a huge chapter house with a giant, a giant fresco painted by Duncan Grant. And this was, this is at the back of the back of the chapel. So everyone would be sitting facing forward. And that was also very distracting. So it was a scene of a fisherman and boat people. Nope. <laughs> Can't think of the right <laughs> word right now. Boat people uh, unloading, <laughs> unloading stock from a ship. So they're all kind of big, burly men. Um, <laughs> they've all taken their tops off. They're all wearing very tight shorts. It's really interesting to compare that to these earlier church paintings, which are very much like, ah, oh, no, body's going to get you cast into hell. Mm -hmm. There's lots of grotesque things happening to a more modern view of looking at like, you know, the body beautiful and, you know, how that can be um, a form of worship as well. Like appreciating the beauty that, that God may have bestowed or is allowing us to see or, um, you know, whichever way your theology works in order to, you know, to appreciate something beautiful because there, there is beauty in, in religion, in belief structures. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they give people hope in, in dark times and things like that. And, you know, trying to get people to do good, you can scare them into doing that. I prefer to come from, from a hopeful place where, you know, if you're good, then good things happen and that goodness shines through. It, it sounds like from your description, it reminds me a little bit of Marsden Hartley's paintings of fishermen yes <laughs> i guess okay. i guess mainer like men who are they're very like mountainous like you he was definitely also uh queer so they almost seem like landscapes in a way mm -hmm. and they're very relatable in a, in a lot of different ways that he doesn't do we we looked into him like hoping he had some like bum paintings and oh, <laughs> we didn't see no. any it's not about mostly like okay. front only <laughs> <laughs> not that we know of maybe there's a painting out there that is yeah out there we'll, and hopefully we'll one day see what we can find yeah 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 <laughs> one of my other one of my favorite themes of kind of religious art is mm -hmm. stuff that's in churches that isn't supposed to be there or okay. is kind of there but hiding. And so one of the images in the book is a little carving that was supposed to be like high up in a church um, in the UK, never supposed to be seen, never supposed to be kind of understood or appreciated. It wasn't, it wasn't art to tell a story. It was just a little hidden thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a guy who is, you know, exposing himself. He's holding his ankles up. He's got his oh. <laughs> entirely on display. Um, <laughs> and it's up in the roof of this church. In the 1990s, I think, they built a cafe in the church, which had, which was like uh, inside the building. And it meant that there was a little terrace that made it much more visible. Yeah. And suddenly. <laughs> People this, noticed. Yeah, this picture <laughs> was much more visible and uh, started a conversation about art in churches that wasn't supposed to be seen mm. Dude, that, that that would be a great cafe i would think yeah, yeah. Good, good conversation piece <laughs> and just think of the merchandising <laughs> like yeah i'd buy a postcard of that um <laughs> there was some, some various fun conversations with the vicar saying hi we're, we're writing this book can we take a picture or can we use a picture of this grotesque that your church is now famous for thanks <laughs> Well, was it intentional or was it, well, yeah, yeah you know it was intentional, but was it like biblical or was it kind of just like a wink, you know, by the sculptor? <laughs> wink. The, a wink, <laughs> a big wink. <laughs> it's definitely the second one. I'll see yeah, if okay. I can find okay. it quickly now because it's fun. There it is. Oh, this weird little guy. So this oh. one at the bottom. Okay, okay. Ooh, I can't see if I know. Very cool. Wait, what page is that? I can pull that it That is here. page 70. So it is part of the, part of the structure of the church. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yes. Okay, How okay, could we okay. forget? 
Um, and yeah, <laughs> um, so that little guy and misery cords, which are carvings that are <laughs> under seats, so they're not supposed to be seen. Mm -hmm. And it's become a, it became a bit of a tradition to do non-Christian but still spiritual things in the carvings under misery cords. So there's lots of mermaids, there's lots of green men, mm. um, there's lots of weird avuncular creatures. So to translate, a green man is a kind of like a, a face or, or a, a figure that's kind of made out of leaves and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, people thought they were like an old pagan symbol. Research has shown they hadn't been, but it's somehow it's been connected with like really traditional English folklore and folk tales and things like that. So we see them quite a lot over here in the UK, but I'm not sure if they translate across the pond at all. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of that. No. Yeah. It's very like Wicker Man vibes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, unfortunately for it us, works, though. A, lot of yes, the, <laughs> a lot of the medieval carvings under seats also include bums, which is great because bums on seats, that's that's what we want at the end bums of the day. On seats, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a few more minutes so that we could talk about a couple of our favorite bums um, that I don't think are in your book? Is that, yeah, is that okay? Yeah, go for it. You want to go first? Oh no, you can go ahead. Oh, I don't know. Mine if I was go disqualified. First. Oh, yours actually. was disqualified. Oh, mine yours was disqualified was a, in the beginning. Was so a pooty booty. Mine was a pooty booty. Yeah. yeah, it was the um, Andrea Mantegna's uh, fresco, Oculus fresco, Camera degli Sposi, the one of the little pooty. Um, it's butt. <laughs> um, because it's just sitting like on a like his, the angle. The I angle think, yeah. um, mm. is what's hilarious, but also the bum is just sitting on top of what looks like two stacks of glazed donuts. Of okay. course, yeah. Sure. So, but yeah. So I'll just mention that a little, little. Absolutely. It also kind of looks like two croissants coming together. <laughs> the bum. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a lot yeah, of nice buttery. Yeah. Are you guys hungry? Is that what's happening? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. Crunch, <laughs> crunch time here. <laughs> And then I, I got into, I did a real deep dive, well, not a deep dive, but I got really into uh, the Kappa monster from, or not monster, the Kappa yokai, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a mythological, like, monstrous creature from Japan. <laughs> um, so they are humanoid, like, turtle-esque, and they, they kind of hang out in the water. They have kind of a bowl cut um, with, like, a little, like, monk bald <laughs> center. Yeah. And according to Japanese folklore, they were really attracted to this human like <laughs> this this human like soul ball that exists within your your anus so they would go and essentially like essentially if you saw people like dead floating in the water they assumed that the the kappa monsters would get them okay. and extract their their soul anus ball so um i forget Through it the is it shiri sh i'm going to butcher this yeah. shiri kodama Shiri Kodama. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think that's the name of it. But there's so many like beautiful prints and one one by Hokusai in mm -hmm. one of his, uh, I think it's the 12th manga series, where you have this man kind of like sitting on, I guess it's like a fence post with his, his butt just, <laughs> just sticking out mm -hmm. over the water while he's smoking. Yep. And the the Kappa monster underneath is kind of rising Lurking. from the water, just like staring right at it. <laughs> this one this looks guy like a just Muppet. Sitting there having a an innocent little smoke with his bum. Yeah, yes. doesn't yeah. know what's doesn't... about to happen. Okay, yep. <laughs> exactly. I need to look this up. Yeah, um, yeah. We crazy. should have shared it with you. I'll have to. Yeah, I'll share it with you afterwards. But yeah, it's a beautiful print. Some yeah. really interesting and sometimes really funny stuff in Japanese art. There mm -hmm. is one which we've posted on socials before, which is a very unhappy looking cat getting caught in the stream of two farts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, so so the, that... the, the image is composed of like one guy farting from above in the top yeah. corner, one guy farting from below in the other corner, and this cat in the middle who looks... Caught in the middle. Yeah, not happy so, about it at all. Speaking of which, one of the ways to scare away the, the Kappa monsters was to fart at them. Okay. So there are prints <laughs> of the same sort of like projectile like fart beams. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really kind of blowing them back into the water. It's very... Um, wow. See... Very but, visceral. <laughs> but farts are apotropaic. They keep demons away. So, yeah, keep on farting, people. It's, it's the only way to protect yourselves. It is a way to protect yourselves. <laughs> this is actually very much like the, the Venus as well, because I feel like her bum is is giving me some, like, peace. Oh, okay. Some mm -hmm. peace okay. of mind, yeah. As she clears the Kappa monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A safe passing, if you will. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We'll, we'll tie in an ending here, but why don't yeah. you let our listeners know like where um, they can find your work? Where, where would you have them look you up? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can find us online. We are on the socials. 
at Museum Bums um, on whichever social platform you use. If you have enjoyed us talking about our book and, uh, and about Bums, you can find our book wherever you like to purchase mm-hmm. books from. So there it is. There it is, right there. That's Museum Bones, <laughs> A Cheeky Look at Butts in Art by Mark Small and Jack Shoulder. We've Absolutely. Also highly recommend it. it is a great entry, not into just bums, but also just like some art theory. Like it's really it's incredible. It's a refreshing look. Yeah. If you think you know art history, <laughs> check this out. It's very accessible too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, That's fantastic. so good to hear you yeah. say that. That's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, we also yeah, have calendars and note cards available as well. So oh, okay. if you don't oh, want to read a book, nice. if you just want to... Just want to look at the bums on the date. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to send bums to friends, lovers, enemies, accountants, <laughs> we can help with that. <laughs> I love that. Get your daily dose of bum. I love that. I love seeing y'all on our um, feed. Yeah. It does, does always cheer us up. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, great. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you or so for, much. for coming on. Oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> Thanks again to Jack and Mark for joining us, listeners. If you if you haven't already, we'd like to know. We'd like to know what your who your favorite art bums are. Who your favorite art bums? That makes it sound like there is a bum in art. I mean, there are some bums in art. There's a lot of bums in art history, yeah. actually. Like the the bum kind, not the bum kind. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they're bums. Like like you, like they they're, they're asking for a sandwich sort of situation because they want to paint. There's a lot of there's a lot of those types of bums. No offense to bums or bums. Uh, Got new stuff in the Patreon. In we the got, works. Yeah, we got a civilization. We're do, we're doing the thirteen part civilization. We're doing all thirteen uh, episodes. Am I just going to talk this entire time? You want to come in? I'm going to come join in. in. I'm yeah. going to come in. Explain it to the listeners, Stephanie. Listeners, we are covering <laughs> Civilization by art historian Kenneth Clark. Yeah, all thirteen episodes. Kenneth Clark is an art historian. Interesting fella. From the first half of the twentieth century. Yeah. Dinosaur. Interesting. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. It has been interesting. Yeah. So, come on in. The water's fine. Watch along with us. It's gonna be a great time. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's um can't I cannot guarantee it will be good or bad. Listen, we are on a journey, a journey. to covering ways of seeing by John Berger. Okay, trying to get there a, first. This it's is a, a thirteen long journey. journey, thirteen step journey. Yeah, to ways of. Seeing. I don't know if we're doing a very good job of selling this. It's gonna join, be great. Join our Patreon. It's join like two it. bucks. We need it helps you. us make the show. We love you. We love you very much. We'll see you um soon. Very soon. Goodbye. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>